Hi, welcome to Split Atom. In the next chapter of my home lab breakdown, we're going to focus on how I've created my own personal virtual cloud. So in version one of my uh, home lab, it started with a bunch of computers. Each of these computers was a repurposed piece of hardware. Um, each was running its own uh, server OS or some flavor of an OS, different versions. In my case, most of this, this was mostly uh, Windows machines. Um, I spent a lot of time on these machines having to uh, do a lot of care and feeding, so uh, treating them like pets. Um, each had its name, each had its own quirks and problems, but there wasn't a lot of flexibility with this. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to bring new services into my lab, um, it was really hard to do because all my resources were spread across a bunch of these individual machines. And then finally, it just wasn't very pretty. I had a bunch of boxes all over the place, a bunch of cables running. I wanted to kind of you know make this prettier. So I decided I was going to modernize on some of the principles of cloud computing. This meant that um, I was going to start treating these machines, uh, treating my compute uh, more like cattle, uh, being able to spin up these resources, put services on it. Um, if one of them got sick, I'd kill it off and spin up a new one. Then I also wanted to start thinking about, uh, from a hardware level, start focusing on my home lab providing compute, storage, and networking. And then shift to, you know, with this, shift to uh, an infrastructure as code uh, philosophy. And then finally, I wanted to make it geek pretty. I wanted to have that rack with all of my machines in it and make it nice and pretty. Now the picture you're seeing here, I actually pulled this off of, uh, off of Reddit. This isn't my server. I hope to aspire, or I aspire to get there one day. This is my current uh, home lab environment. So I've got a single uh, rack mounted server that I built myself in a little StarTech route and on the back of a StarTech rack. And on the back of that, I have my uh, Ubiquiti Unify router. And then on top, I've got my Synology box, box for backup. So from a parts perspective, talking through my virtualization server, um, what I started with is an AMD Ryzen 1950X uh, uh, processor, which gave me or 16 cores and 32 V cores. On that, I've got 128 gigs of RAM. I've got two 250 gig SSDs for the OS, they're, they're mirrored. Then I've got a couple one terabyte Intel uh, NVMe drives, and this is where I host a lot of my, or where I host a lot of the, uh, the, the, the storage for my uh, virtual machines. Then I've got four four terabyte SATA drives in a ZFS uh, format where, uh, and I call this my, my lake. And another uh, four uh, six terabyte SAS drives in ZFS, and I call this my swamp. And this is where all my storage happens. And then finally, for backup and some kind of you know base level file uh, servers, I've got an eight base Synology box. So as I look at this from a high level kind of conceptual view of my uh, the services that are out there. Um, for, from a services perspective, what I have is I've got a couple, so I, the, the, the machine I showed you in the picture a few minutes ago, um, that's, uh, that server's called Matrix. It's running a virtualization uh, 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 platform called Proxmox. And in that, I've got a set of uh, compute resources um, that, where, I, where I kind of uh, have all my services. I kind of look at these as districts. So as I'm going through this, uh, I've got one called Adam, and so my domain is uh, my domain at the house is called Splitty Adam. My main set of servers for that is Adam, and these are Windows servers. And for my home lab infrastructure, uh, I've got SQL Server there. But the big thing that the the Windows server provides is it gives me DNS and Active Directory for. Uh, um, kind of unified authentication across all my servers. So then some of the other districts that are there, I've got one called core and that's where I've got my main dashboard uh, for all my services. And uh, I'm running a couple things, Wiccan and Trillium uh, are there and that's how I do some of my organization. I'm gonna do another video about those. 
Uh, one of the, uh, the, the other districts I have here uh, is called Sentinel. In Sentinel, that's my monitoring solution for my uh, home lab and also for my house. There I'm running a real-time uh, or a time series database with Influx and uh, some monitoring things. So I've got, for my network, I've got Unified Polar, and I've got a way to go and, you know, a pretty dashboard for it. So this is one of the, you know, getting into home labs, there's a few kind of gateway drugs to get you into this. Uh, the, the monitoring and sent, or the monitoring with Grafana and all that stuff, that's one of the big ones, I think, that draws people in along with Plex and, and uh, uh, even being able to host your own server, uh, games and stuff. So a few more I wanted to kind of highlight here. Uh, I've got Stargate, which is that's where my, uh, my external facing services are. Uh, I've got Nginx running there, and then behind that I've got WordPress for a website, and then some other stuff that's coming later. I've got my shadow net, my shadow network where I'm running Pi-hole, and that's where I do my ad blocking things like that. I think any home lab you look at, there's got to be a game server there. So I've got uh, Minecraft running for my son and some of his friends, and then for work type stuff. I have uh, a notebook environment running with Jupyter and Anaconda and Airflow where I do some of my Python stuff. And then I've got what I call Area 51. And that's where uh, I've got some of my more hardcore services running in there. I'm running NiFi, Apache NiFi and Apache Kafka. Now I've got a second Proxmox machine I call Station. I named it after uh, one of the guys in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. Um, probably date myself on that one. But on that one, I've got my backup of my Windows domain. Uh, so it's really, you know, the, it's, it's really my domain server and my Active Directory. And then finally, all my backups are happening uh, on that Synology box that's out there. So let's flip over and I'm going to give you kind of a quick overview of uh, Proxmox if you've never seen it before. And uh, you can see kind of why I like it so much. So Proxmox has a web front end, and I'm going to go log into it right now. And what you're seeing is, uh, I can see from a data center point of view, um, I've got a couple machines that are there, uh, Matrix and Station. Let me make this a little bigger for you. Uh, so what I want to do, so from a, uh, the data center point of view, um, that's where I can manage things like my overall storage and connect storage services for all of my virtualization servers. Uh, the one thing I want to focus on here really is backup. So one of the things I needed in my home lab was a way to do backup of all my uh, virtual machines and containers and stuff that are out there. So I've got the Proxmox has a really good backup uh, uh, service as part of it. So here you can see I've got a, a, a backup that's running. Uh, this job runs every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and I think uh, Sunday. And I run this at night, and what it does is uh, I've got a set of uh, servers that are out there. It goes and sh puts those in suspend. It backs them up, and uh, it actually backs them up to that Synology box that's out there. And then brings them back up after it suspends. I should have mentioned that. So that's from a data center point of view. You know, backup's the big thing. It's a critical service, and I, you know, I love the way it's set up. Uh, when as I go and look at, uh, we're gonna dive into one of the uh, my virtualization servers, the main one, uh, Matrix. You can see here in the the list of virtual machines that I have out there. I've got my Atom machines that are out there. Those are all my Windows machines. The big one being this uh, Atom domain server. Um, as I click into it, you can see that I get a summary of it, of the, uh, the server, a little bit of information about how it's been doing. Uh, from a console perspective, rather than having an RDP in, I can actually, you know, Proxmox has this nice console that I can use where I could uh, remote into the machine and work with it. Uh, what I want to focus on, uh, before I start digging in deeper into some of the virtual machines, I wanted to go down here to the storage side of this machine. Let me um, click on this and look at uh, from a disk perspective. So here I can see a list uh, from a disk perspective, all the different uh, disks I have on this 
uh, virtualization machine. And uh, what I've done is I've chose to, uh, to group those using ZFS. So uh, I've got them grouped into different uh, 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 storage pools. So there's my lake and my swamp storage pool. And with that, I get a little bit of redundancy. Uh, I'm running uh, ZFS, uh, ZFS2 with this, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, RAID Z2 with this, or RAID Z1 with it. So I've got one uh, uh, you know, extra redundant drive as part of that. I'll do a separate video getting deep into ZFS. I love ZFS as a way to you know, group my storage and kind of, you know, do backups and things like that. Um, so then uh, going back over to my list of virtual machines, you can see there's my Minecraft server. But the big thing are these 400 level, and I just group them. These are just kind of arbitrary numbers, but uh, Proxmox has you put a number for each of the machines and a name. So my 400 series machines are all my Linux machines that are out there that are uh, running my different services. So there you can see that core that I talked about before. You can see my uh, Jupyter, which is my notebook box, uh, my Shadow, Sentinel, and Area 51. Each of those are different. It's kind of a, I like to call them districts. Uh, and each of them's running a set of services that I have on there. Uh, so what I wanna do, so, uh, uh, yeah, and to go kind of look at the way I organize that, I'm going to use VS Code, and I've got another video about why I use VS Code for this. So uh, instead of use Terminal, I use VS Code, and I'm going to go, we'll go quickly look at the core box, and I'm going to SSH onto that using, uh, using VS Code. I'll put my password. And uh, for those that haven't used it, VS Code's great for being able to do this and organize and work with a virtual machine. Uh, so, okay, I've connected. I'm going to bring up, uh, open up the file browser. And then get, uh, okay, so um, actually I don't need to open a terminal yet. But here you can see uh, this is, I've got a set of folders here. I've got core, which is, uh, that's going to be the organization for uh, or my the way I'm organizing all my code, I'm using Docker Compose for the services. So I just want to quickly show you that yeah, I've used Docker Compose. I define out each one of the services that's in there. Uh, the big one for this one is, uh, you know, I've got Heimdall out there, uh, right here. So I've got Heimdall, which is my dashboard for it. Um, I've also have Weekend, which is uh, how I do some of my, you know, kind of the way I organize my, my uh, the different tasks that I'm doing uh, for my for my work and for my home lab. Uh, but I, what I wanted to show you, the big thing here is, um, rather than have to go and click and install and do things like that, I'm actually using Docker Compose to to script up my uh, the different services I have here and be able to spin them up and spin them down using Docker containers and uh, uh, kind of simplify that whole process. So uh, I mentioned as we start got into this that I'm really taking that 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 cattle methodology here of being able to, you know as a cloud be able to spin things up. Any of you that use uh, Amazon, you understand, or AWS, you understand the concept of AMIs. Um, I've got a set of images that I've uh, uh, built up here. So if I want to go and say today I need to go spin up a new machine based off CentOS seven. Um, I've got that image here in Proxmox. I can right click on it and say clone. I give it a number and I'm going to say it's going to be 501. I'm going to call it demo. I've got the choice of doing it as either a full clone, which it makes a copy of that image, or I can do it as a linked clone, which basically it creates a, a, a diff file and it's a much quicker thing I could do, it saves disk space. So I'm going to do it as a link clone. I hit clone. And you can see down here the it's spinning. It spun that up. Boom. I've got it right there. I can, I can start it. And I'm in console. And you can see that, you know, very quickly in a matter of seconds, I've got a new CentOS machine in my cloud that I'm spinning up and uh, uh, can start to do some work on. 
so that was a quick kind of overview of uh, of my cloud. Um, click back over here and back to the slides. So some future plans of this. Uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to add more cores and more RAM. If any of y'all are hoping to get into this, uh, 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 one of the great things, I wish I would have seen this before I built my first machine uh, as, as part of my home lab, my first rack mounted machine. Um, there's a great website community out there called serverbuilds.net. They do something really cool. Uh, they, they really look at using repurposed uh, or uh, uh, retired uh, cloud hardware and taking that you know, from, from the, the big cloud providers and big you know, data center companies. Um, the hardware in those, uh, those, those companies, they, uh, they decommission it and sell it off as, uh, uh, as retired hardware. So you can grab that and build a much more powerful machine than mine uh, and very, very cheaply. So you can have multiple processors, uh, uh, DDR3 RAM, which is much cheaper than the DDR4 RAM I use. So I highly recommend check out the guys at serverbuilds.net. I'm also looking to take advantage of uh, 10 gigabit ethernet uh, and we'll be uh, implementing that pretty quick here. My UPS today is a, 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 a regular UPS like most of us have under our desk. I'm getting a rack mounted UPS that I'll be putting into the rack. I'm also, I showed you that I have those districts or virtual machines out there with all my services. Uh, today I'm doing it in Docker Compose and I have those individual machines. What I'm moving towards is being able to cluster that all up into uh, just a set of, you know, virtualize it even more and use Kubernetes as a way to orchestrate bringing up those containers. And with that, I'm going to look at uh, going into a more tr uh, a true CI CD stack. And with that, implement Ansible as a way to kind of script that up uh, and use an Ansible to, to automate a lot of that and build some playbooks. So that's it. That's it for my home lab or the first uh, kind of big overview of it. Um, I really appreciate it. If you took the time to watch this, please come back uh, for, I'll, I'll be doing more in-depth videos on the different components of this lab. And I'll be bringing some of my friends in to talk about their home labs in the future. And whenever I mention code or uh, within the video, I do post that code at github.com slash splitting atom. So please subscribe if you're interested and uh, come back and see my future videos. Thanks a lot.